Welcome to the Fallout 76 guide. Here we're going to cover the basics. Alright, so this guide's pretty much just going to cover the basics. Everything you need to know to get introduced to Fallout and Fallout 76. I found that a lot of things in the in-game tutorial simply didn't cut it. So I thought I'd go ahead and make my own basic guide for any newbies that may be coming by. This game is much more difficult to play with keyboard and mouse, so we're going to cover all those hotkeys. I'm not playing with a controller, so sorry if you're looking for that, but it's not here. Now, the very first thing that you need to understand in this game is the Pip-Boy. The Pip-Boy can be navigated through a series of menus and sub-menus. You can use the W and S key to navigate the menus, which are Stat, Item, Data, and radio. If you go to the stat menu, here you can find your character's overall statistics. The first menu you're going to encounter is your status menu. Here is your overview of your entire character. From the damage you do, the damage you can take, your current health, your buffs and debuffs, and so on. Next you have your effects, which are your current buffs and debuffs. Past that, you have your overall statistics broken down into strength, perception, endurance, characteristics, intelligence, agility, and luck. Each of these will have its own description next to the character icon at the bottom. Now if we press D again to go to the final menu, this will be your overall currencies in the game that you can spend at various vendors. Now, if we go to our next main menu and exit the submenus by pressing S to go to items, this is your overall inventory and everything that you can find within your inventory. The very first submenu you're going to find is your weapons. Pretty straightforward. All offensive weaponry can be found in this menu. Grenades, pistols, shotguns, laser guns, and the like. One thing that you may notice already at the bottom left hand corner next to your currency is a weight scale. That weight scale is the overall amount of weight that you can carry before you start having movement issues with the amount of goods that are on you at one time. Every single item in your inventory, no matter apparel, aid, weapons, and so on, will have a particular weight to it that you can see right above the value of every single item statistics right underneath its icon. Right now this cryogenic grenade weighs 0.5, so if I were to use this grenade it would reduce from my 95 overall weight 0.5. So on with every single item, as this tactical 44 pistol weighs 5.9 pounds, so it would be reduced 5.9 if I were to get rid of this pistol. Now that we've been introduced to your weight system, let's continue on to apparel. Apparel is a mixture of armor that can grant you actual defensive measures as well as various perks and specialty armors as well as just cosmetic apparel such as the uniform that is on my character now. This uniform will go over your actual armor itself and your armor won't be seen as long as you have some cosmetic apparel. The difference in cosmetic apparel and armor is easily seen within the statistics of the item. This left metal arm has a damage resistance of 12. If I go down to Pioneer Scout Tadpole uniform, the very uniform I'm wearing now, all you see is a weight and the value of my item. This is an apparel meant simply to be looking good in, fashion if you will. Let's go ahead and continue to the next sub menu which is aid. Here you will find food and water as well as various medicines and some of these will be introduced to in this video. Next is MISC. MISC is various items such as door keys as well as gunpowder and bobby pins, copper ore. It's almost slightly random, things that you think you'd find in other menus but in this one you will find uh, mainly passcodes and things that are used in particular areas within the open world that you've collected over time. Those will be found in MISC, but such things like bobby pens and copper ore, as well as gunpowder, actually have alternate usages. 
can actually be used for alternate things that you'd think would put them in alternate menus, but they're here anyways. Anyways, on to the most confusing menu, I believe, is Hollow. Every now and then you'll get a tape that you can play, and all those tapes or recordings can be found underneath the Hollow menu. I find this to be the most confusing because when you pick them up, they don't say Hollow or anything of the sort. Now let's go ahead and go on to our next menu, which is Notes. Notes is any sort of piece of paper you pick up in the area. Some of them can be used to build things such as these plans. They say known because my character already knows these plans. And plans can, uh, can be used to build within your camp. We'll go through that later on in this video. On to our next menu is Junk. Any sort of scrap you find that can be used as material for crafting will be found in this menu. Things like plastic forks, cups, knives, and various small objects you find can be all used for materials that you break down at a workbench, which we also will be covering later on in this video. On to our next one is mods. I have no mods on my character, therefore there's none being displayed. What mods are are essentially items that you pick up that can be used on your weapons to make them more unique and improve their damage as well as their aesthetics such as turning a baseball bat into a rocket bat by adding two little jetpacks on the side of it to make it look very cool but not really increase its damage by too much but it will increase its damage on to the last one we have ammunition any ammo that you find in the open world for any sort of weapon can be found here in this menu even if you don't have that weapon on you it will be found here as you can imagine you really got to be careful what you're carrying on you because it all weighs you down, including this ammunition. I have 51 rounds of .308 rounds. Each one doesn't really weigh that much, but 51 rounds combined does start to put a minor toll on your weight. So you want to be careful with that. Now, on to our next main menu. We are going to scroll by pressing S to go into data. In data is where you are going to find all your quest information and your current and previously completed quests. If we press D, we can go over to the side here and see our side quests, various side quests that are active, which I can activate by pressing spacebar, and you'll see that little square pop up, as well as the mission pop up on the top right of my screen. If I press spacebar again over the same mission, it goes away. These are my side missions that are currently available for me to complete, or the ones in which I've actually picked up in the open world. If you press the right arrow key, you'll go to daily. Here you'll see your daily missions, which refresh every day, as well as the ones that are active or are inactive in the world as well. And then finally, if we go one side over, you'll have your event. These are current events that you have partaken or are currently partaking in. I believe these two are active in the world in which I hadn't returned to. Um, what event missions are, essentially missions that you stumble across that are based upon a particular radius and the event occurs within the radius of that mission. Now let's go over to our final uh, tab here. If we press S, we'll go to our radios. As you walk into the world, you'll find various radio signals you can listen to. For simple entertainment, the classic radio, to actual mission-based radio stations that you find in the world that can lead you to hidden missions. Pretty cool, huh? Anyways, that's all of our tabs and all of our sub-menus as well as the controls on how to navigate them. And finally, I want to show you how to exit this. Now, most PC games, you press escape and you exit. Uh, we're all used to that, but not this game. To this game, you actually have to press the tab. You have to press tab to exit. And also, as another little uh, helpful hint, if you hold down tab, you'll actually turn on a flashlight. I'm not sure you can see it here, but you can see the glow right there. Now, if you've actually been paying attention to my UI bars, you can see that I actually really need to drink water, which is gonna take us directly into our next basic course, which is survival. Now, to cover survival, we're back in our menu, which is why our menus took uh, the most precedent, because if you don't know how to navigate these menus, you're actually gonna have a hard time to do a lot of things. So let's go ahead and continue to survival. The first thing you need to do is you need to navigate to your items tab by pressing I. Let's go ahead and exit the menu by pressing tab. We're going to press I to open the menu and it's going to take us directly into our items tab. Once we are there, we then have to navigate 
to our sub menu that is aid. In this particular time, I'm in the ammunition tab, which is the furthest to the right. So I have to go ahead and press the A key until I reach aid. Now, if I was on weapons when I entered the inventory menu, what I'd have to do is I'd have to hit the D key until I reach aid. And now, once we are here, we can see that I actually need to drink something because it is affecting my AP. AP is something that we will cover momentarily. So let's go ahead and find something that we can drink. Toxic water, that doesn't look too well. Whiskey, whiskey uh, decreases my intelligence by one, increases my strength by two, and increases my water by 15. So we're gonna drink one of those, and you can see that it's actually increased. Let's drink one more. There we go. And it looks like my AP is no longer affected. If you're wondering what I'm referring to, it's down there on the bottom right hand side of my screen is my health as well as my water tab, in which I need to keep up or else I will have uh, particular effects fall upon me. Now I need to go ahead and eat some corn because I'm also hungry. Ah, and if you hear that little noise there, let me eat another corn. Hear that? And that is radiation. You see, what I should have done is I should have taken this pill here, or this medicine, called Radex. What Radex does is it allows me to absorb a certain amount of radiation without it affecting my health. Radiation is all over the place in this game. It affects your health by taking away a portion of your health and putting it in this red line. No matter how much uh, aid you take, it will not go above that red line until you take it away. So. After taking a Radex, which I have just done, now we can go ahead and eat corn, and it's not going to have a real effect on me. The Radex gives us 200 plus rad resistance for 10 minutes, and but it increases our thirst. So I can go ahead and feed and increase my health slowly while the Radex absorbs the radiation from the food that I'm taking. Now, I still have to drink and I have these three dirty waters which doesn't sound good but I'm gonna take them anyways so that way you can absorb the radiation I got a little bit of liquor here some wild berries to eat and I think that'll do for now now that you know the various foods out there that are in the world that you need to partake in and how to access them. Alright, so now that we're done with that, let me talk about stim packs. Now, as we're running through the world in various ways, we could end up getting hurt by the environment itself. And one thing that you want to make sure that you always have on you is stim packs. You know what? Strike that two things stim packs and rat away once again we enter our almighty menu by pressing i why do i turn off the menu run around and do these things and return to the menu so that way you can get used to doing the exact same thing we don't actually leave this menu to talk about stim packs or at least not right away rat away is something that you absolutely need because as you saw you can gain radiation simply by eating food but there's a lot of other ways to gain radiation out there in the world including simply walking through most rivers most rivers and bodies of water will just jam pack you with radiation so be careful when crossing them look for rocks to jump on and jump over on bridges and stay on land as much as possible and out of the water right away as you will see if you pay attention to my health takes away radiation. There are two current forms of Radaway I have run into, and that is pure Radaway and Radaway Diluted. Radaway Diluted takes away 150 rads, while Radaway takes away 300 rads, although they both increase hunger and chances for disease. I'm out of my menu because there's actually a quick button to use your stim packs right away. Stim packs are essentially just your meds in the game. The thing that refills your health all the way up. Those are stim packs. They come in three varieties that I've run into. Diluted stim packs, which heal the least. You have your basic stim packs, which heal a fair amount. And then you have super stim packs, 
which heal a lot a lot. Right now, if you just press H where you're low on health, you will lose one stim pack and you'll see it in the bottom left hand corner. Now my health is all the way up and I've used the stim pack. Stim packs are automatically equipped to the H key to be used at any time. Next, we're going to talk about something else that you got to equip yourself, and that's your quick bar menu. We're going to cover this through mouse and keyboard, and if you hit your middle mouse button or your scroll wheel, you're going to see this menu pop up. Now, this is going to be your quick menu, which you actually have to equip manually here. Say, if I want a weapon um, in this particular slot, i got to hover over it to select the slot, and then I have to hit the C key. Once I hit the C key, there's a large variety of things I can equip here. From a fragmentation grenade to a mutt fruit to eat to radex itself and even some flowers the way I do that I hit C I hover over the item I want say a tactical 44 pistol or a fragmentation grenade and then I hit spacebar to select and now it is there so if I hit one I go to my first selection and if I click I pull out my weapon that's in my first selection I hit 2 to my second selection 3 to switch to my grenade 4 to switch to my alternate grenade which I can throw at any time to throw grenades we'll cover that in combat which is what we'll be covering next so yeah combat now to reload your weapon you press the R key to fully reload which we currently don't need for this weapon but if you hold down the R key, you put your you put away your weapon. So, R key to pull out your weapon real quick. Hold R key to put away your weapon. That is your first combat lesson. Now let's move on to the rest. Alright guys, we're out here in the world and we're going to start talking about combat. One of the first things that you need to know about combat in general is stealth. This game has a basic stealth mechanic. If you hit the control key, you'll start crouching and sneaking about. As you can see, you see the words hidden atop my screen. That is obviously a hidden icon letting you know that if there's any enemies around, they don't know your location, they don't know you're there in general. So, first thing I want to do, I'm going to connect some log here. First thing that I want to do is I want to pull out my weapon. I want to make sure that whichever weapon I currently have is the one that I want to fight with, which is this weapon right here. And then I want to scout for some enemies. This is the first thing I want to introduce you to, is the VAT system. This is a lock-on system that will use your AP that is found at the bottom right of your screen. As you can see, there's percentage chance to shoot this creature, and as long as I have it locked on, my AP is slowly dropping. If I pull the trigger, a percentage of my AP will be used to execute the creature. Now, this is another great way to display combat. If I go ahead and switch to my first person mode by either hitting V or hitting the middle mouse button, and I approach this friendly little creature here. Hey, little fella. And if I go ahead and just tap my ALT key, it will apply minor damage to my weapon, which will have to be repaired at a workstation. But for now, let's go ahead and collect. You see, scrap can be found all over the world, and scrap is always on those creatures in which you kill. You never know what they might drop, but you're always going to need it, and it could always be broken down into something that should be stored away in your stash which is what we're going to cover after combat. Now, that is a mole rat, level 26. It's actually dangerous, but it doesn't know we're here, as you can see where you're still hidden. I can't actually see that mole rat, but thanks to VATS, which can be activated by pressing Q, which uses your AP, I know exactly where he is and my percentage chance of hitting him. VAT is a great way to just find enemies in the world that you can't see with your naked eye right away. Look at this thing. It's sitting there. It's ugly. And we're approaching it because we want to show you. There, caution. That means the mole rats know there's something nearby, but they don't know my exact location. Now I'm going to go ahead 
and show you what happens when they do. Now it says danger. They know I'm here. They're going to attack. They know where I am. And now it's time to kill them. Ninety percent chance of hitting them. You can see that some of my AP is wasted. I'm going ahead and hit Q again. Ninety percent chance. Ninety-five percent chance. That is how that works. Now, they really don't have anything on them that I currently need. At least that one didn't. You always got to make sure that you check all the creatures you kill because you never know what they're going to drop. Anyways, that's basic combat right there. You can lock on your characters by pressing Q, which activates VATS, which is a lock on feature. I'm saying this over and over again so that way you get a drill directly in your head. And also, remember to crouch, remember to move about. You'll know exactly when your enemies really are locked on to you when it says danger. So if you really don't know if they're coming towards you, crouch. And there's always something dangerous out there. So there you go. That's basic combat. Let's go on to scavenging and crafting. One thing I also should mention. Sprinting also uses AP, which acts as stamina. So watch out when you jump or when you sprint. It's going to waste your AP. Anyways, scavenging and crafting. First thing we need to cover, scavenging. There are bags all over the world. Now you're going to find weird things in them, like this baby rattle. You never know what's in the core, but you always want to hold on to it. Things like that can always be used for crafting. You have to break them down at a workshop, which we'll cover momentarily. There's stuff you can find everywhere in the world, in the most unlikely of places, and stuff you never know will come in handy. A hairbrush. Don't mind if I do. Why a hairbrush? Because it can be broken down. A bench? Well, I don't really need a set. Hear that? Whew. Scorch to the ferals don't get you. Rad's will. I'm hidden. And some dude out there is talking. But I'm here to take a base. See, this is what scavenging is all about. You never know what's really going to be out here in the open world. Telephone? Taking it. Tall glass? Taking it. Burnt book? Taking it. Free war money, which is just money to us? Taking it. Baby rattle? Taking it. Yeah. Now that people have come back to this area, they'll all want to be setting up places like Foundation. Hey! There's stuff all over the world, and all of it can be broken down into smaller portions that can be made into ingredients for various items. So let's go ahead and explore that. I guess this is a good time to actually explain the menu system. Now, when I mean menu system, I don't mean the stuff that you find in your pit boy. If you press escape, or M. Yes, M. It's going to open up your map. And at the top corner of your map, right up here, you see it says hit Z for menu. This is where you're going to find your main menu, where you can actually see a variety of things. Let's go ahead and take a look at them real quick. You have Atomic Shop, which is essentially your cash shop. You can find a variety of things, a majority of which are just cosmetics and stuff that you can actually dress up your house with. Next to that is a scoreboard. This is essentially their battle pass, and it works just like a battle pass. So yeah, challenges. These are the various challenges that you can complete daily, weekly, per character, survival, combat, social, and world. Each of these challenges provides you with what they call atoms. Atoms is a premium currency which can be used in the cash shop. Next is social. This is where you can add people to your friends list and so on. That's a great way to actually meet people in the game and then add them to your friends list and then jump in them with the party. Next is our final menu, which is photo mode. If we hit photo mode, it's going to allow you to take a picture of your character in a 360 degree world. All you got to do is hit spacebar, and now that photo is going to appear on your loading screens. Have fun with that. Now that we've actually done that, and we return to our map by pressing either escape or M, we're going to go ahead and talk about your map. Let's take a look at all these different things on the map. First off, these are players. The little dots here are players. If you hover over them, you'll see their name and their level. Now these blue things, these blue icons, are locations that you've been to in the world that you could actually travel to by just clicking on them and paying the fast travel fee of five caps. Caps being the in-game currency. But that's not all. You also have open world events 
that are currently taking place and which you have either been a part of or are a part of or are a part of as this symbol right here. Next, you have these which are open world areas in which a player can actually take over and build his own defenses as well as structures to have a little minor base in the game itself in the public area. These over here are actually personal bases. Personal bases is everything that a player can have within their within their camp, which is what we're going to cover momentarily. Now, most of these places that I've highlighted can actually be traveled to short of the players and the mission locations. And this location I want to show over here is my camp. Take a look at that symbol. That's your camp. Anywhere you put your camp in the world, you can fast travel to for free. And anytime you enter a world, your camp is going to spawn there, unless something's already in that location. Then it's going to ask you to move to a separate world, or just play in this one without your camp. Let's fast travel there now. Hey, there's my picture. What did I tell you? Now that I fast traveled to my camp, you can go ahead and uh, take a look at it to see what some of the possibilities, what you can do yourself. Up on top of here, I have all my crafting stations, which I'll cover momentarily once we're done with the minor tour. These are all items that I've had to build using various resources. Oh, hey. Good to see you again. As well as in-game characters that I've met for ongoing quests. I've obtained a lot of the blueprints to actually build these items through completing various quests in the game or finding them in the open world. Some of them that I've actually purchased, some of these I actually purchased in the cash shop using the premium currency that I've gotten through completing the various dailies and challenges. This is what I've built so far with a lot more to come, but just like everything in the game, it all takes scrap to build and resources broken down. So let's go ahead and talk about breaking down resources as well as the workbenches. Now, approaching a workbench can be a little daunting right off the back. As soon as you approach any workbench, you're going to be provided with these three options. Craft, scrap, items, or modify, repair. Now, in this case, what I am going to do is I want to scrap, so I'm going to hit R. Here in the junk menu... I have all this weird stuff that you just seen me pick up in game. Now, this is all scrap. Need to have some information on my crew. If I press T to scrap all junk, you're going to see all the things I'm going to get from breaking down all of this. I hit enter, and now all my junk is scrapped. But that's not all I can scrap. I can actually scrap just about anything in my inventory, and it'll all break down into something or other. Let's go ahead and break down something like this spike boxing glove. If I break it down, I can get raw leather, raw rubber, and steel scrap. Hit enter, and now all of that stuff is on me, and the boxing glove's gone. Alright, now let's talk about these other two menus provided within a weapons workbench. Now, a weapons workbench is one of the various types of workbenches that all specialize on crafting or modifying particulars. This particular is weapons. Over here we have our armor workbench, where you craft and modify armor, you have your Tinker's Workbench, which can be used to craft bullets. And we also have our Chemistry Workbench, which can be used to craft medicines. And then we also have a Brewer's Workbench for alcoholics like me. Now, back to our Weapon Workbench. Now, if we look at the other two menus that are currently being provided for us, we have Modify Repair. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one by pressing Spacebar. Inside Modify Repair, we have the weapons that I currently have equipped on my character or are found in my inventory. Let's go ahead and select one. I can select one to modify by pressing Spacebar. Inside my Modify, you can see that I can select various parts of my weapon to modify. Let's go ahead and take a look at Vigorous Receiver. Now within here, you can see that there are a lot of different receivers I can replace my Vigorous Receiver with which is highlighted by the little dot right next to Vigorous Receiver at the bottom, in which I am currently highlighted. Now, if we look at these, we can see that the statistics change based upon the receiver in which I am highlighting. This is letting us know what it actually does, as well as with a bit of text underneath all of our receiver categories. For instance, this one says, Improve hip fire Accuracy and Damage. This is made for a player who doesn't want to aim down sights but wants to shoot up close. So you're able to actually go ahead and change up a weapon based upon your preferred play style with that weapon. Same goes for your barrels, your grips, and your sights. 
have a reflex sight, but you could also put a giant scope on here, as well as going back to standard sights if I don't want either of them on there. Not only that, but you start off with none of these being available for any weapon. You actually have to unlock all these different receivers by themselves by taking a similar type of rifle and breaking it down, breaking down a bunch of different hunting rifles, and they'll randomly reward you a piece of modification to apply onto your weapon. That goes for every single weapon. So if you see an enemy that has a weapon that needs to be broken down, you go ahead and make sure that you obtain that weapon off of him so you can break it down and get a modification for your weapons. Now, just like the Pip-Boy to actually escape these menus, if I were to hit escape, as most PC players are used to, you would actually just go back to your map menu. So what I'm going to do is we're going to hit tab to escape and then hit enter afterwards. That was pretty convoluted, wasn't it? Now, every single one of these has similar menus and operates similarly, except for those that are focused purely on crafting, such as chemistry as well as brewing. Now, all of that scrap does weigh you down. So what you have out there in the open world is a stash. Stashes is essentially a mobile bank. No matter where a stash is, when you access one, it's going to be everything. These stashes can hold up to 800 weight. So you want to be careful not to overstash them with a bunch of stuff you never use or else it's just going to weigh you down. But you don't have to worry about security because everything in your stash can only be accessed by you. Anyways, that's the basics. I hope I covered everything for you to go out there in the world and not get your head blown off by a super mutant. Good luck out there, and don't die.